Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you all so much for joining me for this week's Friday Sews and I hope that you will stay tuned because I have a feeling you are going to be so proud of me. <laughs> I'm really excited to share my makes so let's dig in. Before we dive in, I just need to say a huge, massive thank you to each and every single one of you that commented on my 2022 goals video for my sewing experience and journey, as well as for this channel. It was so overwhelmingly positive. So many of you reinforcing that I absolutely can do this or encouraging me to go after some of those collaborations or partnerships and things like that and it really does mean so much to me that something that I shared with you resonated or for those of you who are already in touch and we're hopefully talking about collaborating so if you have some goals that you have yet to share with someone in your community or to put it down in the comments below so the rest of us can cheer you on, please do because it really does make such a difference when you just put those thoughts out there into the world. A lot of good can come from it. Before we dive into the video, I do wanna tell you what I'm wearing. This is a self-drafted dress that I made back in 2020. If you want more details about it, I'll link my 2020 dresses video that I made down in the description box, but I love it. Sort of has a slight elasticated waist and tons of a ruffle and frill at the bottom. But yeah, love this dress. All right, so with that said, you guys have been encouraging me and watching me on this trouser fitting journey with the S9114 trousers that I've adapted, altered. We've done a lot with that pattern and I am so excited to share with you that they are done. As of last night, they are completely finished. Look at my new babies. Okay, you can't really see but just you got to know it's good. Okay. We've been through a lot and I don't even know if this is the video to really get into it so that you can appreciate. It's all like worn in because I wore it to work today. You know, something makes you really excited when the very next day it's on your body and out into the world. <laughs> so I wore these to work today. I was very excited about them. And like my colleagues were like, oh, cool pants. And I was like, thank you. I made them. All right. So these trousers gave me such a hard time for so many different reasons. Many of you in the comments have mentioned that you would be interested in me sharing just my entire journey with trouser fitting and trying to get these pants the way that I wanted them. So I have that video coming up. So again, I won't get into like all of the nitty gritty details, but I did end up omitting the pleats altogether and actually inserting a dart and going for a flat front finish. And I will share with you in an upcoming video how I did that. I ended up going with the like bar and hook closure instead of buttons. So I added two of those, which gives a really nice secure finish. I added just a bit of elastic right in the center back See, it's not that much at all, but just enough so that the fabric would sit up against my body, against my back instead of sort of pulling away, which I get quite a bit anyways. And I didn't want to overfit them. I know that you can kind of taper it in or do a curved waistband, but I wanted the flexibility for the fabric to have a bit more give. I used trim, which I will get to in the Thrifty Thursday section, but I did go in and use my trim, which is big for me this year. It's a part of my goals, just using the finishes that I know and some of the trims that I have. <sighs> yeah, we did it. So this was the vision to have all of these prints strategically placed. And hopefully, I think I took one picture at, while I was at school today, so I will go ahead and pop that in and hopefully you can appreciate them. You know, they're not perfect. They have 
some things going on, especially when you have to basically quilt fabric to get it ready to actually make trousers. There can be some, you know, some challenges, but we persevered, we progressed, and we put in fly front zippers. Something that you all didn't know is that the S9114 trousers or any trouser with a fly front zip actually was in my original Make 9, but because I started working on these trousers prior to actually sharing that video with you guys, I was like, well, that's kind of a very quick turnaround. So I swapped that for the, I think I have like a flowy pant pattern. I think I ended up going for the very easy Vogue 9014 trousers, like a very flowy pant after I recognized, hey, you're kind of already doing this whole pant thing. Maybe you should pick something else, but I am really happy and the confidence these trousers alone have given me is humongous. Thank you all for cheering me on along the journey. It really did help. And every time I was kind of fed up, I was like, you know what? You can do this. You totally got it. And they fit. I'm so excited about that. Now, when I said that you would be proud of me, you thought it was about those pants, didn't you? What I'm here to tell you is that between last Friday and this Friday, much has occurred, okay? I spoke to you all about that skirt. You know the one. You know the one, the one with the ruffles. You got it, Vision. Are you seeing it? Okay. Well, Fatmata made herself a skirt two Ankara fabric prints, beautifully complimentary. I mean, I'm just gonna show you. Here we are, guys. There's no way that this would even be satisfying for you the way that I'm seated. Do you see the ruffles? I ended up going with S8746. I made some alterations. The reason why I use that pattern is because one, I had used it previously last year to make a skirt and I knew that it was a wrap skirt and that that would be probably a really good starting point for me. And then I did a lot of math, okay? So if you are not a fan of pi, of finding radiuses, understanding circumference, this DIY is probably not the project for you. However, I know based on my last video, um, one of you kind souls out there had mentioned some Vogue patterns. And hopefully if I can remember, I will link those down below because when I went to go and look at them, I was like, you are on the money. Like those flounces and the skirts and the way that the patterns look definitely would have been good to achieve this. In my efforts to use what I have in my stash, I knew that I could come up with the dimensions of how I needed to cut the ruffles as well. So it worked out very nicely. I'm gonna see if I can take some video footage of me just like trying it on a little bit so you guys can see. I had the waistband on here, but then took it off because I wanna do like a minor alteration, but the actual bulk of the skirt, the wrap, the flounce, I love the fact that I mixed the two different prints together. A little bit was based on style because as you know, I brought all of that fabric out intending to kind of mix it, but, but I did end up having to use it because of necessity. There wasn't enough of the teal colorway to actually make up the full skirt. This beauty right here is completely French seamed. Look at that. This is the inside of it. Do you see? Do you see a seam? Can you see it? It's glorious. The bottom of the ruffles are beautifully narrow rolled hemmed. I mean, I can't make this stuff up. It just is a work of art. That's what it is. And I'm really proud of this one. I made it up in a day. I didn't eat much food and my kids hardly saw me, but it was made in a day. And it would have all been completed had I not sort of re 
thought how I finished the waistband. So as you can see here, the way that I finished it, I just did like a, like a tiny little fold, maybe about three eighths of an inch if so, and turned it over twice. So because of that, I had a lot of length, but that was my intention. I wanted to make sure this thing overlapped enough that I was not gonna have any funny business, no swishing of the fabric and exposing me, um, but maybe I took that a little too far and I have a lot of excess fabric. So I'm going to have to figure some things out, but I do plan to get it done this weekend and get it all beautiful so that I can take some shots in it for my December and January makes video, which hopefully you all will be seeing shortly, but the ruffles are here. And that brings me to my next point, which is I love the wearable toile so much. Like it fed my soul. It gave me what I was looking for. I don't even think I'm going to use the fashion fabric <laughs> that <laughs> that this is the wearable toile for. I feel like this combination, these colors, this fabric, I feel like this is what this skirt was meant to be made up in. And I'm just so happy that as a wearable toile, this is what I chose. But when I put it on, I was like, I'm sorry, why are you making another skirt? So the reality is while I love, I still do, you are my baby, I do love you. While I still love this fabric, I was thinking about it a little bit and the idea that, you know, the bold print and all of that was the thing that I loved so much about it. I felt like the flounce because it's, you know, you kind of cutting this curved image, putting these two layers of flounce on top of each other, which would kind of get lost in the sauce with this kind of fabric. And then I'd be cutting it up. I wouldn't really be able to enjoy the print. And just thinking about how slinky this was, the way that I had to wrangle and sort of manage this Ankara fabric led me to believe this wasn't gonna be an enjoyable make in this fabric. And the fact that I was thinking about adding the horsehair braid and all of that, whilst this cotton fabric did it beautifully on its own, no support needed, I thought that's not, it's probably not worth it. So I'm pivoting, I'm being flexible as it were, and I have decided on what else I wanna make with my beloved fabric of choice. I went to my beautiful little basket and this is where I'm storing all of my make nine patterns as well as any like top of mind patterns that I think would be really good. Maybe things that I've made recently or made previously that have already been traced or cut out or things that I can think of that might become tried and true patterns. They live in here, not that many. And that makes it very easy for me to kind of sift through them and make some decisions. So I think I've decided to actually do the like dress, the outer dress from the S9114. So many of you guys might already be familiar with this, but it can be worn as a dress. It can be worn the way that Mimi G is wearing it here, sort of layered. And I just think that is gorgeous. I can see myself wearing this throughout every single season if I make it in this fabric. So oh, here's why. I think that the black base definitely makes it suitable for fall and for winter, even though it's a lighter crepe fabric, but the bright and bold colors in it are still so lively that I could see myself wearing this in the spring and in the summer if I wanted to, but really in the spring, I definitely could see myself wearing this more as a dress and then throughout the other seasons, I could wear it as a dress or as a layering piece. So I'm really excited about that. I think the boxy nature of the garment, it doesn't have princess seams. It doesn't have a lot of fussy shaping and the bottom tier panels are just straight so that's going to be so much easier to try to manage and cut out of this fabric and it's actually an item that i think i would wear all the time 
while I love the skirt, I don't think I would wear it as frequently as I could wear something like this. So I'm actually not bummed about this at all. I have about six yards of this fabric because I've bought it three times, two yards each time I've purchased it. And I think the four yards that I have will be designated for the S9114 dress version and then the remaining two yards if i can get a sicily slip dress out of it i think that might be what i choose to do so what is up next this is friday you're going to be seeing this video very late but it is the weekend so i think what i'm going to do with my weekend it's snowy and kind of dreary outside and that's perfect sewing weather i think tonight what i plan to do is finish up many, I won't say all, but many of the projects that I've started this month. I have a lot of unfinished things and I've, I think I already mentioned on this channel that me and unfinished projects, we got to cut it out. So I'm not saying I'm going to overhaul and do all the unfinished projects that I have from the previous year, but what I will try and do is not consistently produce more unfinished projects moving forward. So at the very top of the UFO pile is this green blouse that we've talked about at length, it seems. Still no buttons, still no buttons. This blouse just needs some buttons and we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I can actually try it on and see if the fit really works. I've just been draping it over my body and pinning it in the back and saying, I don't think this is gonna look nice. And really sometimes I've noticed that that style of trying on clothes isn't really indicative of how well the clothes fit. So I gotta try it on for real and I cannot wait to see how it goes and to see if I wanna make any more of these. This is Simplicity 8736. It's, uh, it's the vintage 1940s blouse pattern. It has the pin tucks at the bottom. You will see it in the December and January makes video review, but I hope I like it because it did take me some time to make and I would like to be able to wear this to work. I think it would be cute. So I wanna finish up the tops and some of the makes that I had for my daughter. Some of those need to be just tweaked a little bit. And I want to make sure that I finish all of the trousers. Some of them just need like the bottom needs hemming and all of the other ones need buttonholes placed in them. Or if I decide to do the um, clasp, it's not a clasp, what is it? Like the hook and bar closure that I did on the patchwork or patterned pants, then I will do that. But uh, they just gotta get done. So that's my goal. And it's nice having the December and January makes video top of mind for me, because I think that's gonna be a really big motivator for me to get it done in a timely fashion so that I can share those with you in their full on glory. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> okay, so this week in Thrifty Thursday, which is my little segment where I celebrate all things thrifting, all things affordable and sustainable. And I just wanted to share this gem. So it's not new in, I picked this up some time ago. It was 99 cents. It was such a great price that I had to staple the price tag to it because I was like, I forever in my memory want to recall that this was 99 cents for all of this trim. And the reason why I'm highlighting this trim is because it is the trim that I featured in my trousers. So here they are and there it is. I featured it right below the waistband, which was actually nice because it hid all of the sins of my stitch in the ditch. We will not speak about it, but it's, it's a cure. And then I also used it right down the side seam, mainly because the pattern matching did not want to, it did not want to behave. And instead of it being such a jarring and disrespectfully bad, pattern match job, I decided to break it up even further and just put some trim down there. So at least your mind wasn't already wanting to make the dots connect. 
you're just okay that it doesn't match and that we just all move on. Okay, we're just gonna all move on. So as far as what to expect in upcoming videos, some things that I will have for you fairly shortly, I hope. I want to get the trouser video out to you because like I said, the trousers are done, at least the main one that we've all been waiting for. So I'm going to take some time this evening and throughout the weekend to make sure that I finish up the ones that I started because what good are they if I can't wear them? And I'm going to put all of those together, hopefully get some footage of me in them so you guys can actually see fit as I'm talking about it and that you're not necessarily just having to use your imagination as I share them with you. So hopefully you are looking forward to that. I'm certainly looking forward to sharing it. It might be a little bit convoluted because a lot of stuff has gone down since I started this journey, but I think that you will definitely be in for a treat. Outside of that, I did record the process of me making the gorgeous flounce skirt. How could I not? I'd been talking this thing up for so long. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you how I was cutting out the flounce, how I determined the radius and all of those measurements to make sure that I got it right and things that I might do differently if I were to make something like that again. The nice thing about it being a wrap style skirt is that in my mind's eye, I could always just add sort of a top to that and make it like a wrap dress, right? Right? Or just make it a wrap skirt. I do have wrap dress patterns that are in my make nine for this year, so I think I'm set. But really excited with how that turned out and wanted to share that with you. I do plan to do the December and January makes video, so you can expect that as well. And I have not forgotten about 2021. I do want to do a roundup. What I was debating, however, the reason why you haven't seen it yet is because I didn't know if I should sh sort of stand and share them like I did for my 2020 makes or just do sort of like a video recap of the twirls that I've previously recorded and shared with you in previous videos. I think I might go with that option and then do a video where I just talk about sort of like the highs and lows, maybe the hits and some of the misses or some of the challenges or the things that ended up as sort of UFOs <laughs> that need to be worked on. So I think that might be the route that I go in. Not sure just yet, but you will absolutely be the first to know. You know that you will. All right, so I think that's all I have today. Thank you so much again for joining me. And I was so thrilled to like run home and record this. I cannot wait to be back in the sewing room for upcoming videos because I like being there so I can like grab things and show you all. But the kids are home and there was no way this video was gonna happen with those people outside. So I'm glad you're okay with this. Now, the reason why these two beautiful patterns are also up here is because this is a part of my upcoming makes as well. I think after this like really intense journey with the trousers, I'm ready for a few lighter projects before I dive back into some of the makes that I cannot wait to get to, like my tops. I really wanna get back to finding the right blouse pattern. But before then, I wanna do a few things with my knits. When I was looking at the remaining fabric that I have for the fall and winter collection, which I keep in the sewing room in this little basket. Um, so I recognized that I had one, two, three knits that are waiting for my attention. And I wanted to go ahead and dig into them. So I brought out my trusty S8982. And I definitely know that some turtlenecks are going to be in the works. I also have never tried View C and I can't wait to try it with the puffy sleeve, like what the model is wearing on the cover. So I'm going to try View C. I also know that I wanna make a dress, a sort of knit dress, but I haven't decided what I want. I want it to, We'll talk about it. I, I will have to report back in the next Friday so is how I'm feeling about that. I want to use this gorgeous, like army green sort of color. It's just so beautiful. It's a really nice knit. And 
like it's really nice and I want to make a dress out of it but I don't want it to be super form-fitting it's a solid color and you know it's not a print so it can feel more exposed I feel like when you're in a plain color than when you're in a print so I just want to be mindful of what I make in this um, so yeah I'm still thinking about it which is why I haven't made it yet but I want to get to that and the reason why this silly fabric is on here which is S8972 which is a costume pattern I actually picked it up because of you see so as you can see there that is a corset of sorts you gotta listen I'm working with what I got here so it is a corset I don't want whatever the skirt the skirt portion of this outfit is I just want the bodice which is the corset and in my plans video for fall winter I had mentioned that I have this glorious fabric that I want to turn into some sort of like corset style of top that has a zipper um and this has a zipper so i'm thinking about using it we shall see i bought it in one of the 199 simplicity sales last year like at the end of last year at some point so i'm willing to give it a shot i hope it's not like a very laborious process where i go through all this work and then it doesn't turn out but there is some sort of like a corset type of top that i've had for ages it's a black one and i love it and i like pairing it over other things it sort of comes out as a peplum a little bit at the bottom and i absolutely love it and i think having it in green because of all of the different things that i'm making that sort of have this green color in it i think i'm going to be really really better off having it so excited to give that a try and we'll of course share that with you when i do all right, friends. Well, I think that's all I have for you today. Have a wonderful day. Please tell me down in the comments below. How do you think I did with the trousers, with the skirt? What videos are you looking forward to most or would you like me to consider making? And let me know what you're getting up to in your sewing space. Have a wonderful day. Stay creative. Bye.